And welcome back to the Everman Driver Car Cave. Alongside Alex Afris, I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks so much for watching today. This week, we are reviewing the 2014 Kia Sorento SX Limited. This is a sharp looking vehicle and it's new. Not many people have this car out right now. Yeah, this car is a completely new chassis, about 80% new interior, so it is a completely new vehicle. Before we get to our review, we have some big news to announce. We are launching an Everyman Driver podcast coming up in May of this year. It'll be available on iTunes, Stitcher Smart Radio, and on everymandriver.com. We will give you more details as we get closer to the launch date, so stay tuned for that. The Everyman Driver podcast coming up here in May. So this vehicle we're about to review is actually a vehicle that we got a chance to drive in Snoqualmie, Washington, just not too long ago during Mudfest. Yeah, and then we actually got to drive the vehicle all the way from Snoqualmie to Spokane. We've had it all week, so needless to say, we've gotten a lot of time behind the wheel. Definitely. We're going to begin today with the engine and performance of the 2014 Kia Sorento SX Limited. The 2013 Sorento SX Limited has a 3.3 liter V6, which produces 290 horsepower with 252 pound-feet of torque. It is direct injected, and this engine is standard on all of the Sorentos except for the lowest trim level. And Dave, this provides plenty of power for highway cruising or even light towing applications. Really powerful engine. Yeah. Uh, fuel economy numbers aren't too bad. It's projected to be about 18 miles per gallon in the city and up to 24 on the highway for an average of 20. And that's exactly what we've been getting in mixed driving because we've been on the road a lot. Uh, actually came back from Seattle and we've been driving around the city. So right there in the middle, I think it's pretty good considering how much power you can squeeze out of this. Yeah, and this is a big heavy car. These, these direct injection engines now are just unbelievable and to get those kind of numbers out of a car this big is absolutely awesome. All right, Alex, ride and handling inside the 2014 Sorento SX Limited. First of all, new chassis for 2014. Yes, they are looking to make this car a little more compliant. Kia owners in the past have complained of a bit of a jarring ride in the Sorento and the Sportage. And it really has worked. The ride in this is quite nice. And to me, the most impressive part of this whole equation might be the steering. There's actually uh, three user options where you can set it up as sport steering, normal steering, or comfort steering. It's obviously an electric assisted rack and pinion system and you can feel a difference immediately. I mean, if, if you're in comfort and you switch it over to sport, the, the steering gets significantly heavier, significantly more precise. So depending on what you're used to or depending on what you like, you can really dial the system in for you. And I felt like with our highway driving in around the city that the uh, suspension is pretty firm. I like it for the, a, a heavy car like this. It seems to be uh, right on spot. Exactly. It's firm but not jarring. The Sportage was a little jarring. This is firm. It corners relatively flat for how big it is. Not unlike the CX-9. It's, it's a big car, but it drives smaller than it is. And from a company like Kia, that's really pretty impressive. Also, there's a six-speed automatic transmission in this 2014 model, but I feel like there's a bit of a lag when we accelerate. Well, consumers have gotten spoiled because, you know, all these cars now are going to, you know, seven and eight speeds. Uh, Ford and GM are actually teaming up on like nine and 10 speed transmissions. But there, there is a bit of a leg while this car wants to kind of find the right gear uh, on hard accelerations. But that being said, you know, this is mostly a grocery getter. Not gonna be too high performance, so not a big deal. Talk about how this thing is laid out because I don't find very many faults at all with this. I find a lot of positives. A couple things do stand out. The digital instrument cluster over here, at least digital in the center, but analog on the outside. Yeah, and this is a, a design that Kia has had in the past and it's really been evolution rather than revolution, which is good because we liked the old one. This new one is better. And so many manufacturers are trying to figure out where they want to put that digital screen with the analog dials. And so many of them do it wrong. Kia, I feel like has done it right 
you've got the speedometer in the middle, which in a car like this is what everybody wants to see anyway. This whole interior actually is about 80% new, and you can tell it's really smartly laid out, smartly styled. I don't particularly like the faux wood uh, paneling, but it's dark enough that you know you, you don't notice it, I think, as much as you would. But overall, Kia has done an awesome job with this new interior. Big thumbs up for this eight inch navigation screen here. Very prominent, very clear, uh, easy to navigate the, the buttons. So I kind of like that. I, I, how do you like how this is laid out? Well, I like it a lot. It's simple, it's clean. You know, they, they didn't try and go too futuristic or anything else. It's just a really good classic look. And Kia's infotainment system is really good. Processor speeds are good. It's funny, oftentimes we'll drive more expensive cars that actually, and, and more prestigious brands, and their navigation systems are a little slower, not as quick. This one's extremely easy to use. And I've got to give a huge shout out to this enormous panoramic roof, Dave. This might might be the biggest panoramic roof of any car we've tested, and we've tested a ton. The temperature outside in Spokane, Washington is the mid-60s right now, but it feels a lot warmer thanks to the sun glaring through uh, the glass up there. Yeah, um, a couple other little neat features. This does have an active eco um, setting, which sort of calms everything down. You can get some better gas mileage. I would never use it. And when it does get cold, this thing even has a heated steering wheel. It also comes with a blind spot detection, so you can turn that on or off, so you're aware of who's around you when you're driving. I like that as a safety feature. Overall, I think it's fantastic. It's got these, you know, you can you get the heated and cooled front seats for driver and passenger. You have similar options for the second row seats as well. So everything really is laid out very nicely, in my opinion. Let's take a closer look now at the back seat leg room and headroom, or more specifically, the second row seats. This is where I was seated before I got in. So let's say I'm sitting behind myself and this is how much room I have. I'm 5'11", my knees are touching the back seat, so it could be a little bit better. There is some good news, bad news. The second row does slide back and forth, but I'm all the way as far back as I can go. So it could be better in the knee room. Headroom is great. This panoramic sunroof is amazing. I've got plenty of headroom here. Let's see what it would look like if you had someone taller, let's say in the 6'2 category, like Alex. Well, I am three inches taller than Dave, and it's amazing what a difference that makes. My knees are firmly pressed against the driver's seat, which actually is still in Dave's position. So if I was sitting behind myself, I would be even more cramped. And in a car this big, that's just not acceptable. This is supposed to be basically a full-size SUV with three rows. And even though you can slide the seats, it's all the way back. So it provides some flexibility, but just not enough room overall. There is a third row, as we mentioned, but cargo space will suffer. Let's check it out. The 2014 Sorento is great because it has three rows of seats, but there is a compromise, a sacrifice, and we'll see that in just a moment with the cargo room. Uh, first of all, though, you can open the back lift gate with the key fob or simply by putting your hand under here and pressing a button, and there it goes. Now, Dave, since you press that, I'd like to complain here for just a sec and do what I do best. I don't like these automated systems where you press the button and the trunk goes down. And the reason why is, is that when you go to put it down yourself, you can hear the electric motor just grinding and it's bad for it and it's hard to go up and down. Why can't they just create a trunk where I can just open and close it? It's not heavy, it's not hard. An 80 year old woman could open and close a trunk. We don't need a little button that you pay more for and it's probably gonna break. I think you could probably go to the gym more and lift some more weights. Everybody should be as strong as me like 80 year old women. So Dave, it looks like they shoehorned in this third row and there's actually, adults can really sit back here, but when they do, there is zero cargo room, none. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what you could put back here, but it's not a lot. Yeah. They do have this, uh, what do you call these things? Cargo net. Cargo nets, that's right. Uh, that can keep, I don't know, you can maybe put some something inside here 
to kind of keep it yeah, in one it, place? Mostly, I think it's to keep your valuables from sort of sliding around too much, uh, but I'd probably take it out. And the good thing about this third row, I know we're not going to have any cargo space, but that second row does slide, so there's going to be a lot more flexibility yeah. for people in the third row, which is nice. There is. There's the flexibility. I just wish that there was a little more room to work with. It's like the, the second row slides and you've got a third row, but everybody's just gonna be a little tighter than they wanna be. So I, I just wish that there was a little more room overall. So you're, you're, you're kinda wishing there may be a, that much more cargo space in this vehicle? Yeah, well, just overall room to work with, whether you want a little more second row seating, a little more third row seating, a little more cargo space. And I realize that as soon as you make the car bigger, all of a sudden fuel numbers are gonna go down. And so all of this stuff is always a compromise. So let's say you have uh, four adults in here, you're gonna have plenty of comfort. Let's put the back row seats down to see how much cargo space you would have if this were a traditional uh, five-seater. Yeah, and you do just pull these levers, it's very easy, and this folds down completely flush to reveal a pretty impressive amount of cargo space. I mean, any groceries or anything within reason, you're gonna have more than enough room in this. And the second row is called a 40-20-40 split because there is a center slice there that does slide down in case you have some longer items that you want to, to put back here. So that's a nice little convenience too. Yeah, and Kia has done a neat job with the little things on this car. The vents that you, know, that you can control from the third row. There's vents in the second row on the side sills. So there's a lot of little neat touches that sometimes you, know, you won't get when you first look at the car. And uh, you can tell that Kia really thought this thing out. There's even sunshades for the back passengers. That's kind of nice too. Yeah, in fact, oftentimes uh, you will find those on high-end German luxury cars. And we all know I like those. All right, let's push your button. Don't touch it, Alex. Just gonna let it go and do its thing. Look at how slow this is. It takes forever. The MSRP in the 2014 Kia Sorento begins around $25,000. Our vehicle was fully loaded. We had the SX Limited. It was closer to $41,000. So all the bells and whistles, everything you could possibly put into that vehicle. And Alex, scale 1 to 10, what do you give it? Boy, I, I really like this car. I'm going to give it, I think I'm going to give it a, a strong 8. Uh, maybe even low 9, but I think I'm going to stick with strong 8. Uh the the interior the new interior is really nice i have a few little gripes one thing that i really hated was the clock on the top of the dash hmm. it, it just it was misplaced it didn't look right on an otherwise great interior um you know and, and it, it is still a lot of money for that car that being said you're getting a ton of car for the money it looks great inside and out that panoramic roof was incredible so i really like this car i think somebody who's looking for a car in this segment has to give the new sereno a look this is a vehicle that i would seriously consider buying on my own yeah i'd give it about a nine yeah i didn't like the fact that there was so little cargo room mm -hmm. i would sacrifice that third row seat personally to have more cargo room i agree in fact if you could, you'd get more cargo room, but also more rear leg room. I'd kick those rear seats back just another inch or so. And it's amazing what another inch can do. Yeah. Uh. And, <laughs> and uh, so uh, th this vehicle is very close. But again, what we're talking about are small things. Overall, I, I think it's safe to say we both really like this car. So Alex gives it an eight. I give it a strong nine. Yeah. And that'll wrap it up for this episode of Everyman Driver coming to you from the car cave, undisclosed location. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching.